Hey guys, it's Miss Simpson and it's time for reading today. We are going to be reading our book, Gregor the Overlander. We are on chapter 17. And today our main focus while I'm reading is going to be talking about the plot. Remember the plot is basically what happens in a book. It's the basic sequence of events in a story or text. So if you're reading a book that is fiction, um, it has a plot that looks basically just like this. Every single book has a plot. So right now I am reading a book. I actually just finished a book that I am reading at home and its plot was so good that I am going to read the second book in the series and I am so excited. I am so excited. That's what I've been spending a lot of my evenings at home doing, just reading, 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 reading. And let me just tell you guys, it is so good. So with your book that you're reading with me, Gregor the Overlander, there is a plot and they are doing things in the book. So let's talk about the different parts of a plot. The first thing is our exposition. Now that is a big fancy word that means the characters in the setting. That's at the very beginning of the book where they introduce you what's going on. So the first couple of chapters, we were introduced to Gregor's mom, Gregor, his two little sisters, Boots, and the other one, I can't remember her name right now, Lindsay or something, um, his aunt, his grandma, his grandma's friend. We knew that the setting at the very beginning was when they were in their apartment, the laundry room, and then it slowly moved to the Underland. The rising action, I want you to think of this plot chart as a roller coaster. The rising action is like when the part of the story that's right before the big problem, when it starts building. So in my opinion, the rising action of Gregor the Overlander so far has been, oh, there's, this is the hard thing about plot. You have to figure out what the main problem is, the main problem or the turning point. So rising action is leading up to the problem. Your climax is the main turning point or the problem in the story. Falling action is the events after the main problem. And your resolution is the conclusion of the story or how the problem is solved. So the main problem in Gregor the Overlander would, in my opinion, would be that he is stuck. He is stuck down there. So the rising action would be, remember, he was in the laundry room and Boots found a hole and fell down the hole and he followed. Then he's stuck in the Underland and can't get out. So they're going, falling action, they're going on a journey through the Underland to find his dad and get out of there. Do we know the resolution yet? No, we are not at the end of the book. We don't even really know all of the falling action. So your job today, after we finish chapter 17, is to um, draw a plot chart and fill it in what has been going on at Gregor the Overlander. You aren't going to fill in the resolution, but I'll explain to you how I'm going to have you do that in just a little bit, and we'll set up your paper together. So for right now, we are going to read chapter 17 of Gregor the Overlander, and then I will explain to you how to do your assignment at the very end. Y'all ready? Okay, so what happened in chapter 16? They became, the biggest thing is all of them became the spider's prisoners. They are stuck, the spider, and they're their prisoners. Oh, I hate that. Hopefully they'll get out this chapter. I'm going to make a prediction and say they're going to get out, and the spinners are not going to come with them. So they're going to have to find another way to get a spinner. Because remember, they need a spinner for their journey to fulfill the prophecy. So let's keep reading. Prisoners, exclaimed Gregor. Are you at war with the spiders too? Oh no, said Merith. We are on peaceful terms with the spinners. We trade with them. We do not invade each other's lands, but it would be an exaggeration to call them our friends. I'll say, said Gregor. So did everybody know they would lock us up except me? He had trouble keeping the irritation out of his voice. He was getting tired of finding out about things after the fact. I'm sorry, Gregor, said Vicus. I have worked long to build bridges between ourselves and the spinners. I thought perhaps they would be more agreeable, but I overestimated my influence with them. He looked weary and old. Gregor hadn't meant to make him feel worse than he already did. No, they really respect you. I mean, I think you're going to, I think they were going to eat me until I mentioned your name. Vicus brightened a little. Truly? Well, that is something. Where there is life, there is hope. 
That's so weird. That's what my grandma always says, said Gregor. He laughed and somehow that broke the tension. Gego, fetch diaper, said Gre Boots crankily. He tugged, she tugged at her pants. Yes, Boots, fresh diaper, said Gregor. She hadn't been changed for ages. He dug through the pack Dulcet had given him and realized he was down to two diapers. Uh-oh, he said. I'm almost out of catch cloths. Well, you could not be in a better place. The spinners weave all our catch cloths, said Sullivan. How come they're not sticky, asked Gregor, touching his face. Spinners can make six different kinds of silk. Some sticky, some soft as Boots' skin. They make our garments as well. Really, said Gregor. Do you think they... They'd let us have more catch claws, even if we're prisoners? I doubt it not. It is not the spider's goal to antagonize us, said Sullivan, only to hold us until they can determine what to do. She called up to a guard, and in a few minutes, two dozen diapers came down on a thread. The spider also sent down three woven baskets filled with clean water. Sullivan began to work her way around the group, cleaning wounds and patching people up. Luxa, Henry, and Merrith paid close attention, as if she were teaching a class. Gregor realized the ability to heal battle wounds was probably important if you lived down here. Sullivan began by cleaning the gash on Mara's thigh and stitching it up with a needle and thread. Gregor winced on Mara's behalf, but the guard's face was pale and set. Two bats required stitches on torn wings, and though they made a great effort to remain still while Sullivan slid the needle in and out of their skin, the process was clearly in agonizing for them. Once all obvious bleeding had been stopped, Sullivan turned to Gregor. Let us attend to your face now. Gregor touched his cheek and found that welts had formed where the webs had ripped off. Sullivan soaked a catch cloth in water and placed it on his face. Gregor had to grit his teeth to keep from screaming. I know it burns, said Sullivan, but you must wash the glue from your skin or it will fester. Fester, said Gregor. That sounded awful. If you could stand to splash water upon your face, it would be more painful, but faster process, said Gregor. Gregor took a deep breath and dunked his whole head into one of the baskets of water. Ah! He screamed silently and came up gasping. About five or six dunks, the pain faded. Sullivan nodded approvingly and gave him a small clay pot of ointment to dab on his face. While he gingerly applied the medicine, she cleaned and bound a series of smaller wounds and forced an uncooperative vicus to let her wrap his wrist. Finally, she turned to Timp and Tick. Crawlers need you any assistance from me? Boots pointed at a bent antenna on one of the roaches. Timp, boo-boo, she said. No, princess, we heal ourselves, said Tick. Timp. Gregor was sorry Timp was injured, but on the plus side, he could now tell the roaches apart. Bandage, insisted Boots, and reached out to grab the crooked antenna. No, Boots, said Gregor, blocking her hand. No bandage on Timp. Bandage! Boots gave Gregor a scowl and pushed him away. Oh, great, thought Gregor. Here we go. In general, Boots was a very good-natured two-year-old, but she was still two, and every so often she would throw a tantrum that left the rest of the family exhausted. Usually it happened when she was tired and hungry. Gregor dunked in the pack. Hadn't Dulcet said something about treats? He pulled out a cookie. Cookie Boots? She reluctantly took the cookie and sat down to gnaw on it. Maybe he had headed off the worst. Hates us? The princess hates us? asked Tick worriedly. Oh no, said Gregor. She just gets like this sometimes. My mom calls it the terrible twos. Sometimes she throws a fit for no reason. Boots scowled at everybody and drummed her feet on the ground. Hates us, the princess hates us, murmured Tim sadly. Baby roaches probably didn't have tantrums. No, really, she still thinks you're great, promised Gregor. Just give her some space. He hoped the roaches wouldn't get so hurt by Boots' behavior and they'd want to go home that they'd want to go home, not that anyone was going anywhere right now. Bicus gestured him over to where the others had gathered. He spoke in a whisper. Gregor, my wife fears the spinners may pass on our whereabouts to the rats. She advises that we escape with all speed. I'm good with that, said Gregor, but how? Boots came up behind him and gave his arm a pinch for no reason. No boots, he said, no pinching. More cookie, she said, tugging on him. No, not for the pinchers. Cookies are not for pinchers, said Gregor firmly. Her lower lip began to tremble. She marched away from him, plunked herself down on the floor, and began to kick in at the pack. Okay, sorry, what? What's the plan? Said Gregor, turning back to the group. Can we just cut our way through the web and run? No, this out no, outside this funnel web are scores of spider ready to repair a hole and attack with poison fang. If we flee upward, they will leap on us from above, whispered Sullivan. What's that leave, said Gregor. Only one resort. We must damage the web so fully and so rapidly they cannot repair it, nor will it hold their weight, said Sullivan. She paused. 
Someone must perform the coiler. Everyone looked at Luxa. So Gregor looked at her too. Her golden bat, which stood behind her, dipped its head down and touched her neck. We can do it, said Luxa softly. We do not insist, Luxa. The danger, particularly at the top, is very great. But in truth, you are the best hope, said Vicus unhappily. Gregor put his arm around her shoulder. They can do it. I've seen them in training. They have both speed and accuracy. Luxa nodded resolutely. We can do it. Let us not wait. Gregor, ride you on Vicus's back. Vicus with me. Henry and Merith take one crawler each, said Sullivan. We need a distraction to cover Luxa, said Merith. I could go through the side. Not with that leg, said Sullivan, her eyes flashing around, and no one goes through the side. It is certain death. The spinners are very sensitive to noise, said Vicus. It is too bad we have no horns. Gregor felt a pair of feet drumming angrily into his legs. He turned around and saw boots on the floor kicking him. Cut it out, he snapped at her. Do you need a timeout? No timeout. You timeout. You timeout. Cookie, cookie, sputtered Boots. She was about to blow any minute. You need a noise, said Gregor in frustration. I've got a noise for you. He picked Boots up and wrestled her into the backpack. No, 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 Boots said, her voice rising in pitch and intensity. Everybody ready? Asked Gregor, pulling a cookie from Dulcet's bag. The underlanders weren't exactly sure what he was doing, but in seconds they were prepared to take off. Sullivan gave him a nod. We are ready. Gregor held up the cookie. Hey, Boots, said Gregor. Want a cookie? No cookie. No cookie. No, 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 said Boots, way past the point of being pacified. Okay, said Gregor, then I'll eat it. And making sure she could see it, he stuck the whole cookie in his mouth. Mine! screamed Boots. Mine, mine, mine! It was an eardrum piercing shriek that rattled his brain. Go, you Luxa, cried Sullivan, and the girl took off on her bat. Now Gregor could understand why the coiler was such a big deal. Luxa was rising up along the web, spinning and twisting at a dizzying rate. She held her sword out straight above her head. It was slicing the funnel to shreds. Only an extraordinary and flexible rider could have pulled off a move like that. Wow, said Gregor. He jumped on Vicus's big gray bat. Mine, screeched bo Boots. Mine. Above him, he could see Lexus spinning and slicing. The other underlanders were following her, cutting straight up the sides of the funnel web. Gregor brought up the rear with boots and her blinding screams. At the top of the funnel, the gold bat hung in space before performing an intricate upside-down figure eight under the protection of Lexus's flashing sword. The underlanders zipped out to freedom. Gregor was the only one still in the funnel when it happened. Oh, gosh, guys. Get prepared. From above, a jet of silk shot down, encircling Lux's sword arm and jerking her from the bat. The pair of striped legs reeled her in like a fish. The fangs of Queen Wavox opened to receive Lux's neck. Dun, dun, dun! And that's the end of chapter 17. Okay, we've got a big problem. Lux has just been taken by Queen Wavox and her fangs are on her neck. Like she's like about to bite her. And remember, these spiders are poisonous. So no bueno. No bueno at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's fill out our plot chart for what we know so far. So on your plot chart, I don't know why I don't have a black marker here. Here we go. I want you to draw the actual mountain. So get out a piece of paper and let's go ahead and draw the mountain. Right here. I want you for your exposition, I want you to list the characters that you know and the setting, the main setting of the story. Right here, what happened before the problem? So I want you to write rising action. Up here, I want you to write climax because that's what that is. It's like a roller coaster. Right here, I want you to write falling action. And down here, resolution. Okay, so once you get that done, I want you to pause the video, or unpause the video and we'll keep going. Okay, so you should have unpaused by now. So the, the first thing I like to do when I do a plot chart is list out the characters. So I want you by yourself to pause the video and list out the characters in the setting. 
Okay, so you should have unpaused by now. Now, what is the main problem in the story? Think about that. What's the main problem in the story? We already talked about it at the beginning of the book. He is stuck in the underland. That is our main problem. Now, the rest of this, you're going to have to complete by yourself. What happened leading up to who, him being stuck in the underland? I said it at the very beginning of the video. What, how did he get stuck in the underland? What happened? Then I want you to write the falling action. What are they doing to solve this problem? There, he's stuck in the underland. So they're going on a what, with who, where are they going? And then for your resolution, we don't know this part. So for your resolution, don't write this, it's in marker. I want you to predict what is going to, how the story is going to end. So you write your characters in your setting of Gregor the Overlander. You already know the problem because I told you it. He's stuck in the Underland. That's the main problem of the book. How did he, the rising action is how did he get stuck? Your following action is what are they doing to solve this problem? And your prediction at the very end, your resolution would be to predict how he is, how this book is going to end. How are they going to solve the problem? Predict what's going to happen. When you're finished with your plot chart, I want you to take a picture of it and I want you to turn it in. All right, guys, I love y'all so much. And we will read chapter 18 tomorrow. Bye. We'll see if Luxa is okay. Bye.